G'day you mob and welcome to this episode of The Goss, where I sit down with my old man, Ian Smithson, and we chat about news and current affairs and other things related to Australia and, well, more broadly speaking, the world. Today's episode is a bit of a ripper. We talk about our favourite dead actors. We talk about piss in Aussie English slang and how it is such a versatile word that can mean anything from urine to alcohol to joking with someone. We talk about drinking stories and how I actually never drank before the age of about 23, 24. We talk about MND, motor neuron disease in Australia, and Neil Danaher and his multi-million dollar fundraising effort. Efforts. We talk about Qantas and millionaire CEOs like Alan Joyce during COVID. Then we talk about baldness and how being bald may actually mean you're more likely to die of COVID. There's an interesting relationship there. And then lastly, we touch on the rise of conspiracy theorists these days. Anyway, without any further ado, guys, let's get into this episode. Oh, and before we do it, don't forget, if you want the full episode, you want the transcript, you want the downloads for this episode, and you want to see the full video, make sure to sign up for the premium podcast membership at aussieenglish.com.au forward slash podcast. Anyway, enough rabbiting on, let's get into the content, smack the bird, and let's begin. So serious, <laughs> man. I miss. I miss. I miss Heath Ledger. I miss Miss Smith Heath Ledger. We'll have to do an episode on yeah. You know, <laughs> so serious. The people you yeah, you know, not heroes so much, but yeah, you know, the people you miss or so on that have come and gone. Well, yeah, Heath Ledger was just such a a badass, right? Yeah. Like he seemed to have come out of nowhere. I don't know if he was on Home and Away, like Chris Hemsworth. No. No, I think he, he might wasn't. have appeared on one of those weird Neighbours or Home and Away or something. But only as a- I think he was a guest. He wasn't a permanent member of the crew. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then he ended up doing, what was it, 10 Things I Hate About yeah. You or whatever it is. Yeah, and that then was his real sort of- yeah, Launch. Launch into uh, Hollywood. And then um, and then what happened? I guess he got into a whole bunch of these. He got Ned Kelly. It was a yeah, pretty big so one, right? that's Australian. Yeah. And then um, Batman, mm. which one which, was the oh, Dark Knight? Yeah. The Dark Knight, I think yeah. it was, right? Where he was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and then he died yeah. overdosing. And you're just like, fuck, Heath. Jesus. Imagine where you could be. You imagine what he would have done now. Do you? Can you think of any other movies that have come out since where you're just like, he, you know, I guess you, you just have absolutely no idea because he that was where he was showing his chops in that yes. film of like, I can do anything. Yeah, exactly. You know, like- Almost like Johnny Depp before Johnny Depp just went off the- went Off the deep end. Off the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a bit like- I mean, Tom Hanks, I think, is the best actor in the world at the moment. You reckon? Um, Not Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll just look for the poke in the back for that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my bucket? Yeah. Tom Cruise is funny because he is a good actor, but he just does his one thing. So, he creates- It seems like he creates films that just fit his- you know, tough man. Oh, and look, like the, the Reacher character. one is the one that just drives me nuts. <laughs> yeah, Reacher is a yeah. He, he's the right age. Reacher yeah. is fifty plus, ex Navy SEAL, six foot five, and built like a brick outhouse. Yeah, exactly. And that- Tom Cruise is about five foot seven and skinny. I mean, yeah, he does some weights to build himself up a bit, but he's hardly a you know, monster ex Navy SEAL. Well, they just get a lot of other small people on set, right? And then it's like, oh yeah, yeah well, he looks big. Yeah. Some of the, the movies he ends up being in tend to be pretty cool. I like a lot of the sci-fi ones. Was it, was it Oblivion where he ends up on a planet and it turns I, out he's cloned? I don't watch them. I don't watch yeah. his movies. I can't stand him. <laughs> I, don't know. I have to just detach from the fact and that he's, he's a, a Scientologist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Far out. How's your week been anyway, Dad? What's the goss? Yeah, good. Um, just basically, you know, the end of recovery from the surgery. So, you know, I'm now out and about and walking and- Photographing and stuff again, so which is yeah. good rather than just sitting around the house. The um, family history has suffered a little bit for the for the last couple of weeks because I've been out and about. But uh, getting yeah. back into that today, I was doing some more research on that today. Keep going. I'm just going to turn my phone on to uh, airplane mode before, airplane, yes. as I just got a call from some random New South Wales number. Ah, uh, right. <laughs> Spam. Yeah. Oh, I'll just rip. go turn for it. Off. Yeah, yeah. So you're feeling better though. Yeah, mostly. I mean, I actually don't feel much different from before the surgery, um, no. but that was to be expected. Apparently, it takes a couple of months to see a result. 
or not. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, it's one of those things where you just got to go, well, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we try again. So. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed, right? I don't yeah. know how you go in. No, that's so- all right. I don't believe in superstition. It's bad luck. <laughs> Knock yeah. on wood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it, though. I, it freaks me out, the idea of just, yeah, being in hospital, intravenous drips and, and you know, drugs and everything yeah, like that and getting yeah. knocked out. But I guess you just suck it up, right? Well, yeah. Well, it's, you it, do? Is, it is. Well, exactly. You know, the choice is don't do it. But. Yeah. I think that was a gateway drug for me, to be honest. I think it was like, well, maybe not directly straight afterwards, but I remember growing up, I never did any drugs or, or drank, yeah. right? I mean, you'd probably remember at least as much as you knew. Uh, well, I, you, know, <laughs> you were pretty honest about it, mostly. So. Well, I was always too worried about um, what would happen if I got drunk because I think I guess and we could talk a little bit about drinking culture in Australia, but yeah. I always felt like um, my friends probably got on the on the piss. They started drinking at the ages of probably 15, 16. You've done 16. an on the piss episode, I take it. I think so. I will have mentioned that. Yeah. And that yeah, piss so. is used for alcohol. Alcohol. And, and on the on piss the is on alcohol. the drinking. But it is. it tends to be a session rather than just yes. have a drink. Yeah. Know? Going to get on the piss means all-nighter. You know? <laughs> piss is a pretty good word in English in terms of- Oh, it's, it's got dexterity. multiple- <laughs> yeah, It's got multiple meanings. You're yeah. taking the piss? Yeah. Taking piss off. Piss of I'm taking the piss while you're do- while I'm doing the piss. <laughs> but- um, <laughs> And on the piss. I remember my um friends would- We'd catch up on weekends and it was funny because we're all private boys, private school boys mm. in terms of going to Geelong College. And, um, you know, you would think everyone would be pretty well behaved, but I guess, you know, boys will be boys and, well, young kids will be people kids. People are people, yeah. Exactly. And so, I remember getting, yeah, you'd go to these parties with them and we weren't ever too crazy, but I remember them getting smashed from a young age and just being like, I'm pretty crazy as it is. I don't know. If, like, because you would see the ones who were normally really quiet turn into animals mm. and just the the inhibition just disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you were exactly. just like, my uh, God. Yeah, do I need this? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, I used to drink from a relatively young age and I'm not condoning this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was probably 15 or 16. When well, the I, rules were different. You know, yeah, well, yeah the rules, <laughs> back then. The rules, the rules were actually tighter. <laughs> no, they were exactly the same. Um, but, yeah, I'd go to the pub at 15 or 16, but- and yeah, you know, you'd buy a few beers and sit around and have a drink. But they, mostly, what, they didn't check your ID, or they just didn't care. No, didn't or care. Or both. <laughs> well, both. I mean, I looked older than I, you know, than I was. Yeah. So that helped. And yeah, there wasn't the really strict ID checking and stuff that they do now. I've had a couple of stories about that once. Went to um, a pub with a teacher from school who took two or three of us <laughs> to the pub one on, on Friday night. And he was pissed off because another version of the word piss. He was pissed off because he was the only one who got ID'd. There yeah. were four of us there. He was twenty five, and the rest oh, of us really? were about sixteen. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but um, and the other one I remember years later was uh, going to the uh, the local hotel, and a bouncer stopped me at the door and told me that I couldn't come into the lounge bar because I was wearing tennis shoes. And I looked. I just looked at him. And went. It's like I'm wearing bare feet or thongs. What, mm. what are you talking about? And he said, no, no, it's not the dress code, mate. And I said, well, what about the age code? Because I'll guarantee you I can walk through that bar and point out 20 people who are under 18. <laughs> and he just went, just piss off, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So I went home and changed my shoes. So yeah. that only took 10 minutes because we're at you know, five minutes walk from the pub. But So age was um, a not quite as... Um, Belligerently <laughs> done enforced. You know, and enforced, yeah, you know, with bouncers checking IDs for anybody who looked under twenty five, which is what they do these days. Well, I guess the restrictions now, or at least the fines, the potential yeah, fines of yeah, ten to yeah. twenty grand or something, yeah. if they find someone yeah. that's underage on yeah. your premises. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I used to drink, but but uh, it was I didn't drink to get drunk. Mm. I drank because I liked it. You know. <laughs> And that was the – so uh, I think – I mean, yeah, there were people who did, but I think that binge drinking, you know, the sort of underage binge drinking stuff has really come in the last 20 years. I don't um, even have my finger on the pulse in terms of what it's like today. No, I wouldn't know. I suspect it's the same as but when you were – why do you think that kid. suddenly came up? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, in Australia? Yeah. Don't I mean, know. I guess it's something – maybe we got it from America because they have their frat – parties where everyone gets messed up because I think what's their laws mostly you can't drink until you're 21. 21 you get in a gun states, you yeah. can have sex you can, you can drive you, you can, can do pretty much anything yeah, get enlist, enlisted in the military you can you die can, for your country you yeah, can't have a beer yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we we always say, I remember movies like American Pie 
any of those yeah. young teenage, yeah, teenage American movies, yeah. they would have that sort of culture, especially those plastic cups, right? The red cups with the white interior, yeah. Uh, beer pongs played with them and mm-hmm. everything like that. They would always be that stereotype. Of yes, I suppose parties. there is a bit of that sort of you know, Hollywood syndrome of, you know, it just becomes part of the expected, your expected life yeah. uh, when you see it a lot on TV, but don't know. But yeah, I remember, I think, so I didn't drink until I was probably 23 and- in fact, I think it was James is my one of my best friend's um, birthdays where I would have drunk for the first time or at least near there because I remember there was- I got- Yeah, it would have been remember, his birthday. I actually remember picking you up from his party. Yeah. <laughs> I was probably like, oh my God. But I remember yeah, that the thing- Because you, you didn't drive I think for what, whatever reason. Yeah. What had happened luckily. was that I'd had um, my wisdom teeth out and I remember they sedated me but didn't give me a um, general anesthetic. So, yeah. the anesthetic they gave me was like being drunk. Mm. And I remember waking up from that- and just being, like, out of it, but feeling great. And the, the guy pretty much saying that this is, you know, it's it's just going to feel like you've had a few beers or something. And then I was like, well, if this is all it's like. Well, you know, what have I been doing? <laughs> what have I been missing out yeah, on? Yeah, once I'd had that um, that sedation, I was like, well, I'm not crazy at all. I'm just tired and lax and just woo. And I remember, yeah, I went to James's party and um, what happened? I just tried a few drinks and then was like, yeah, okay, this is pretty good. And then I remember we had New Year's at his place as well. And I went out and got four double blacks, the vodka mm. drinks that you could get, not really having a an understanding of how strong they were and drinking all four of them. In fact, I may have given one of them away and drank three of them in about half an hour and was out of it for <laughs> yeah, the next three hours. Minutes. Yeah. I remember I was lying in his dad's trailer in the garage that he had and his trailer was full of soil and I was in shorts and a, t- a white t-shirt and was just- There's a photo of me on Facebook somewhere, which I'm not going to share with you guys, <laughs> of me just out of it, just like, oh my God, will this end? Like, come on, kidneys and liver, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Please, well, and that's, over that's, this. <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's the problem with uh, those slow acting drugs yeah. and because they also tend to be slow to get out of your system. And- and also, drugs that reduce your inhibition means you're more likely to keep doing it. So, mm-hmm. you know, smoking dope and drinking alcohol, you can, you don't, you know, yes, you, can, you can't overdose on marijuana, you just pass out, uh, but you can overdose on alcohol. You can get alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Um, and most of the people who suffer from that are not alcoholics, they're just binge drinkers who- Someone has just got when you, you've had the bottle, you know, right? Four or five or six drinks in half an hour, and you feel great. And you go, whoa, whoa, yeah. And, that, and so you just keep drinking because you've lost your inhibitions. And then yeah. all of a sudden it kicks in and you pass out and your liver stops working. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. But I remember uh, that being the, okay, this is the limit. I'm not going to come here again. Yes. So I think I've probably been at that stage, not blackout drunk, but definitely this is too much. And yeah. just like, I can't stand up. Like my world is spinning. Yeah. yeah and I remember yeah. having, I, me- I vomited up all of my dinner, which was kangaroo. <laughs> and my friend thankfully got a goon box, cleaned it up and hit it the moment I'd done it. So I looked down and it was gone. And I was yeah. just like, whoa. Goon box. That's another one yeah. for, uh, yeah, with an asterisk <laughs> next to it for you to look up. Yeah. That is a cask wine box where cask wine is sold in a cask, like a, a um, cardboard, cardboard box, box with yeah. a, it's an inflatable foil silver bladder foil bladder it. that, yeah. yes, it's very, very, a, a very cheap A great Australian wine. invention. Yeah. They have play- Look up a wheel of, is it Goon of Fortune? <laughs> <laughs> well, they put the goon bags on the um, the hill's hoist yeah. and you spin it around and whoever it gets near has to has have to a drink mouthful. It. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I remember that being that sort of like, okay, so here's- feels good to have one or two. Having too much is like, that's the limit. You know, and then after that, it was like There's a okay. sweet spot in there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah. was my um, and it was funny because yeah, it would have been twenty three, twenty four when I first did it and got to that point and was like, okay, so I came very slow. Kel the other day was like, I'm so proud of you. I'm like, there's nothing to be proud of. I was afraid of what I could have been. You know, like I was afraid there was some <laughs> dragon inside and I'd have a drink and just be like, ah! but that never happened. And I just want to go to sleep most yeah. of the time. I never, I didn't, get, I just don't get the anger thing too. You you meet people who are either come completely out of their shell and turn into another human being that you never see. Mm. And so, they have to drink to be that fun, crazy, um, their inhibition is gone and they can finally relax and be there who you would imagine is behind the eyes the whole time when they're not acting normally. Yes. And then you have the violent people who drinking just want to get into fights. And I never understood uh, that. I don't know. Well, you know, I suppose- I never just, felt that. Yeah, some people just, you know, their inhibitions release different things. I, uh, well, you can probably tell me better, but I just get louder. 
Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, the number of times I've had four or five drinks, people go, Ian, just quieten down. You know, quieten down. And I think everyone does that, and right? Go, I'm not shouting! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to get so, your point across and everything, but- And yeah. I'm sure it's because you're relaxed and you can't hear yourself. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, because everyone else is shouting. Yeah, there's no feedback. Yeah, well, and that's, it tends to be in parties <laughs> and yeah, the sort of public, yeah, large, loud public situations, but- yeah. By the yeah. way, we're not drinking alcohol. No, we're not. Kombucha. Yeah, these Kombucha. are kombucha. Get them in you. These are really good. So that you can find these at Coles and um, <laughs> Woolworths. I always want to say Safeway, but Woolworths. It is Woolworths now. Woolworths now used to be Safeway. Safeway Victoria. owned by Woolworths. But these yeah. cola kombuchas are really good, mm. and they finally sell them in four packs. Le Bros or Le yeah. Bros. They've got a whole bunch of flavors. There they are some do. great ones, and they're so low sugar. So it's like yes. Yeah, low sugar, low caffeine. It's it doesn't taste of, like it. It's the flavoured fizzy drink you have when you don't want sugar and caffeine. So, mm-hmm. so story-wise, what have you story- got, Dad? Well, you 5MND, we mentioned it last time. Yeah. I'm not sure whether that one's hit the press or not That's yet. not yet. Well, by the hey. time this one does, it will This have. one, yeah. it will have. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 5MND, which I yep. mentioned last time. And I'm not going to put the beanie on because it won't fit over or under the mm. headphones. But- um, They're everywhere at the moment. Kel's always are. like, another one of those they blue are. fucking yeah, beanies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Motor neuron disease, uh, which in America is often called uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, mm-hmm. it's a um, neural deterioration uh, disease. Um, it's chronic, and once you've got it, you're, you're effectively going to die from it. Is this uh, what Stephen incurable. Hawking had, or he had something uh, else? No, he had something else. But it's a similar um, sort of thing. Similar sort of thing, but it sort of it tends to be middle age, you know, young middle age onset people yeah. in their. 20s, 30s, 40s. That's not the an old age aspect thing. of it that's scary where it comes on and just it's randomly, right? Often and you've people got four who, to 10 years. It's often and- people who are um, fitter and um, and I think it's it's disproportionate amongst people who are good sports people. And really? you sit there and go, I, nobody knows why. But um, yeah, so the fight MND thing comes from um, a famous Australian footballer, Neil Danaher, yep. um, who obviously has MND and has had it for about the last eight or nine years. And he has you know, completely outlived the uh, the prognosis. It's usually three to five years is the extended life expectancy <laughs> after you get diagnosed. He's gone way past that. And about six years ago, he started a charity, you know, the Fight MND charity. Uh, just after that, um, you know, the freeze uh, MND thing came out, where the, you know, people were doing the bucket ice bucket challenge yeah. that went around. That was six that was or so years ago. Global, yeah, yeah. And um, and he got diagnosed right about that time, and he yeah. started this charity. And uh, he's now made more than fifty million dollars in that charity this year, um, eleven point nine million dollars. Right. When um, and the biggest event that he has is at a um, the Queen's birthday uh, holiday. There's one football game on that. It's Melbourne versus Collingwood. You know, two Melbourne teams playing each other at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, get a big crowd, and they have this sort of special event where you know, a whole lot of celebrities slide down a slide into a big swimming pool full of ice, um, and they're you know, raising money for that, and they started selling these beanies. And um, so that game didn't happen this year, and obviously there were no public events because a lot of other public events and things, but this is the biggest year for raising it. They've sold – last year they sold out of these. Yeah. Um and I can't remember who manufactures them. I probably could look it up, but haven't got time. Um, but the manufacturer produces them for free um, as a donation, and they're sold for twenty bucks each. Uh, Crazy. I bought two, but paid fifty dollars each just to you know, add as a donation. Um, but they sold out of them this year again, having mm-hmm. made more than twice as many as last year. So, <laughs> this and, the limit. Yeah, and um, and of course, I mean, there's yeah, you know, the government are actually funding that, you know, this as well. So was government are putting money year, into this charity. Is this the first year where it's, they've popped up in all the large supermarket chains? Yeah, because traditionally they were just sold at football games yeah. or online. Yeah, and uh, Coles and Bunnings, so Coles supermarket and Bunnings, the big hardware warehouse yeah. shop, uh, were selling them. Uh, yeah, I saw and, them in Coles. And Coles did a uh, did a match, a dollar for dollar match, I think, that whatever they sold, they would match. And Bunnings had a because Bunnings has that. Yeah, you know, and again, you probably we've probably spoken about the sausage sizzle at mm. uh, at Bunnings and other hardware stores on Saturday mornings, where often a lot of the local charities and sporting clubs and things will just set up their little tent and sell a sausage in bread 
um, for a couple of dollars and uh, as raising money. But uh, the whole time that these were for sale, uh, Bunnings were doing that. Yeah. And they were doing dollar for dollar match on that. So there was a, um, you know, it's a really good corporate interest in it as well. So. Yeah, it's interesting. I was looking up here, typing away, that there is a link between blue-green algae blooms and um, neurotoxicity and causing potentially causing human neurological diseases like MMD, mm. MND. And it's um, so the key points in this article: research suggests toxin in blue-green algae blooms may increase neurological diseases. Incidence of MND in Griffith is seven times higher than the national average. CEO of MND New South Wales is not convinced of Link, though. Yeah. But it is interesting. I, I remember hearing about it. I don't know if it was on the Joe Rogan podcast or something else where there was- Might have been another- Might have been reading a book or something. I can't remember. But there was a study or something apparently in France where there was a certain lake and on two different sides of the lake, I think there were different- Completely different um, prevalences of MND. And I think they traced it to the only thing they could work out that was different was that the cyanobacteria, the blue-green algae, was present on one side in the shellfish mm. that would be eaten by people and not on the other. And so, they were just like, well, I mean, that's correlation, but- Yeah, but correlation is a good indicator yeah. of you know, further research required. So, it is pretty crazy if that is, if that, you know, further research is done and they work out there's some sort of a correlation to blue-green algae being in the water that people consume or in the food mm. they, they consume and that that's leading to higher um, prevalence of yeah. MND. Yeah. Craziness. It is. Yeah. So, what were the other stories that you had? Um, There's a crazy uh, one about well, mullets, right? Yeah. Well, that one. That's. I've got. I've got. I've, I've decided to introduce a new segment. We introduced the puppies and kittens stories a while ago. Mm. I've got a new segment, and that's idiot of the week, um, and idiot story of the week, and we can choose between them. I've got those. I'll hold off on those. But the big story that's just come out today is that Qantas, the Australian national airline, I got that one on um, here too, has uh, just decided that they're uh, going to lose six thousand jobs, which is about a quarter of their workforce. Yeah. Um, and they still have 15,000 people who are in stand down yeah. uh, that are on you know, job keeper allowance. And that's because of the international travel bans that are currently in yeah. place that and they would normally and work they on are, those. They are suggesting that they probably won't be back to their previous international things for, for three years. Yeah, well, I've got uh, some of the stats here. I think they were saying Qantas's own projections are that domestic demand in 2020. 2020 and 2021 will be only about 70% and it will only get to 100% by 2021-22 and that they're seeking to raise $1.9 billion from investors through a share sale. Yeah. And they're burning through currently $40 million a week in salaries, I think, and other expenses. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, it's- And look, it's- uh, the um, Transport Workers Union have obviously arced up against 6,000 of their members being fired, yeah, but, but- <laughs> and rightly so, um, but it's that rock and hard place thing of- Okay, we keep them on board and we the keep ship them sinks. on board and yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, we'll keep you employed for the next six months and then the company just dissolves. Yeah. Um, or they do everything they can to stay alive and, and keep employing people. The I know the, um, the union, and I'm a, an ex-unionist, so I can't- you know, criticise them too much, but I know the union has has jumped on the where well, you should be asking the government for you know to continue job seeker and job keeper and all this sort of stuff or some form of bailout. But my understanding is that the Qantas hierarchy have already been doing that, and the government has come out and basically publicly anyway. And what they're doing behind closed doors, I don't know, but publicly they've said that job keeper, which is the the payment that the government is paying to workers who are being right? stood down. Um, you know, so that yeah, they're man- effectively they're maintaining a part of salaries. Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars a fortnight or something or a week. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, but that's going to finish in September. Yeah, and there is you know, the government have come out and said they're not in- not going to extend that. Um, so I'm not sure what Qantas is expected to do uh, beyond that. It's uh, it's that. Yeah, the no news, no good news situation where you know either they you know sack a whole lot of people or they go under. Um, well, they were saying too, it's a warning shot to Virgin's new owners. So I think Virgin got bailed out, right, and bought by I'm not sure who it was, but I don't know. Um, yeah. Other investors, obviously, and Qantas needs to maximise its previously dominant share of the domestic market as that market recovers during its um, restructuring fra- mm. f- uh, phase. And there is going to be a fierce contest for the available dollars as the domestic market reopens. So, it's 
its um, own planned savage cost reductions and w- the war chest of $4.6 billion of liquidity created by the, the capital raising and Qantas's uh, debt facilities are like a shot across the bows to Virgin's prospect prospective new owners because Virgin's going to be competing for the same oh, they're local- they're in the same market on the local market. Domestic yeah. stuff. So, it's going to be interesting. What do you think is going to happen with flights, especially <sighs> domestically? Do you think prices are going to plummet in order to try I, and encourage I, people I, to get back on I don't know how they can afford to run a plane. Uh, at, um, G'day, mate. That was the first half of this episode of The Goss. If you would like to continue watching or continue listening to this episode, make sure that you sign up for the premium podcast or academy memberships at aussieenglish.com.au where you will get full access to these entire episodes of this series and much, much more. You can go check that out using the links below or just go to aussieenglish.com. Dot com dot au. Once again, thank you so much for joining me, mate, and I will see you next time. Peace.